Hi everyone. I'm so excited for today. Looks like we already, oh, I got to turn this down. I think I'm all up here. Hello, Denine, welcome. Just had my volume on my phone here, so um, I uh, just getting everyone in here and getting lined up. How is everybody? I'm really excited. We have 14 already here. That's really exciting. Laura, how are you feeling? Hello, Ellen. Laura Meyer. Got two Lauras here. Thank you, Laura. I'm really excited about this one. I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to, um, Today, I'm basically, I've gotten some of these darks in already. And um, I, uh, I'm going to put a few more in. But if I want to get this done in, in two sittings, uh, I decided to get all my darks in first. And um, that's really going to help us move forward and be able to finish the piece. Welcome, Dreamweaver. So glad you're here. Oh, I'm glad you're excited about it. Not quite back to normal, but getting there. Okay. Well, I hope uh, you keep resting up and, and you get back to 100% soon, Laura. That's no fun to have the flu. Peg, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you like the face. So to get things going, I do have a reference. Um, I will show you guys. First, I... Um, I sketched it up on my tracing paper and I made revisions, changes, and all of that. So I have that up here. I like to hang it where I can see it. So it's on my ceiling actually. And then a lot of people ask me if I use references and um, I do to a point. So I drew up this space how I wanted it and everything and then I will use like a base reference for like lighting. And so I have this just off to the side just to help me with some lightings and values just because when you're painting live, <laughs> it's really hard to remember everything. So I think this will help keep me on track. So I just have this as my reference. I'm not trying to copy um, this exactly or anything. I'm using it more for proportions, lighting, values. It's just a good way to have a, a reference that you like, and then it allows you more freedom because you can draw what you want and then go just use your reference for, for lighting and stuff like that. So um, that's what I'm using that for. And um, I wanted to do something today that was my leading edge that I'm excited about. This is something I would paint every day, show up and make right now. And um, I had a lot of fun. It's a little out there, which I always like pushing the boundaries a little bit. And um, when I drew this mushroom and had it coming off her face, I was like, that's a little out there. But, you know, I'm learning just to, to fall, follow that and just let it be what it is and just see what it is. Because that's exciting to me to change things up and have them be a little bit different. Um, that's, that's what gets me exciting to create. So, um, oh, I have a few more here. Tony, welcome. She's new to pan pastels. Well, that you're in the right place. I have a whole bunch of videos for new um, pastel, pa um, soft pastel, pan pastel. Um, if, if you haven't already, I know a whole bunch of you. I just sent out my newsletter to remind people that I have a free membership area with a whole bunch of free pan pastel lessons. Um, one of them I'm going to refer to today is the color mixing one. It doesn't look like it's going to be the most, one of the most powerful ones in there, but the color mixing one is really great because it really talks about how pan pastel is structured. It's in families. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that today and I'm also going to do a little bit of color mixing so you guys can, um, understand how, how I'm thinking on here when I am working. Liz, welcome. She caught another live. She just, um, 
No, I, I, I showed, I think you just showed up. I already showed that um, I traced, um, I have a drawing that I did on tr um, tracing paper that I sketched up. And then once I like it, I transferred it onto the piece and then I support it with a Wolf Carbon Pencil. I like the Wolf Carbon Pencil because it gives a little extra staying power. And so that's where we're at on this one. Hey, Lori, welcome. I'm so glad you made it today. Temple Moore, good to see you back. Valerie's here, welcome. A whole whimsical face, it's gonna be fun. Tony, oh good, I'm, I'm glad that you signed up for that. Wonderful. Liz, awesome, awesome. I'm glad, so I'm gonna dive right in today and um, just finish up with some of these darks. Now when I put my darks in, I personally, it can go a couple ways with me. When I'm on the dark paper, this is a UR 600 grade um, sanded pastel paper. It's mounted onto a um, mount board or mat board. And I just released a video on how I mount that. So if you're interested in leveling up your pastel experience, you can go and um, watch that video. It's on my YouTube and it shows how I mount everything. It really keeps it to where I can handle it. I can store it and it, it, it just helps so much to have it mounted. So this sand pastel sand blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this sanded pastel paper i buy it in the rolls in bulk because i use it so much so it curls and that is the big motivator for me to um, mount it because i don't want to have to navigate that curl because even if i got it flat with a tape um once i pull that up to ship it off to a customer it'll curl and then when they go take it to the framers it can be really stressful for them. And um, so that's why I have it on the mat board. It also offers another opportunity when framing that you can just use spacers because you just put the spacers on the edge of the glass and then you put the, the piece in. I'm gonna be doing a framing video, but I gotta get these lives down so I can um, have time for that. Let's see a chat here. San. I'm hoping I pronounce your name right. Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. Agnes, so glad you came in and said hi. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, I, I know it's bedtime for you, but that's always a big treat when I get to, to see you here. I appreciate that. Your um, Take Flight Owl was amazing. I love that. Um, it was really fun to see uh, you create that um, from the class. I, really appreciate you sharing that with me. Let's see. Okay. So once I have my darks in, I leave them. I, I don't spray anything. You, you could spray a fixative on this layer if you wanted to. I mean, you can do anything you want to, but um, when I'm working with a cream, sometimes I might do that, but um, with the black, it just depends, but you could fix them down. But here's the reason why I'm not. Pas, um, pan pastel are families, like I've talked about, but it's really good for new people and it's always good to say it again, is like, say I have the burnt sienna family and I have the core and then I have the shade, which if you add a little bit more black and then you have the extra dark where you add black and the tint is where you add white to the core burnt sienna. So this is like the core burnt sienna and um, when you're navigating the um, pan pastel, it's, it's not always dark enough. So I like to work from dark to light and I know these areas I'm gonna be pushing back with dark. So when I add black, it's just like working with a shade or an extra dark. I'm just going extra, extra dark. And um, that lays down a foundation. And so these I'm working with are my values. And so the values, I, I want to know where I'm going to be pulling out and where I'm going to be pushing back. So wherever I put black is where I'm going to be pushing back a little bit more because this uh, dark paper isn't necessarily a 10 on the value scale. So I like to push some things back into that maybe, you know, 9 or 10 area. So I've saved us a little bit of time by getting these blacks in here. And I am also going to, this is what I'm thinking for the piece. So I wanna do her hair maybe in a rainbow type vibe, maybe muted, maybe bright, we'll just see how it goes. 
The mushrooms, I'm going to do those in this beautiful um, reddish magenta orange vibe. I'm excited about that. And that's going to pull us all the way through here. The flower I'm thinking of doing in a more peach color. I thought about maybe doing it in like a white daisy. I just think if I do it as a white daisy, it might just be like too much right there. So I'm going to play around with that idea. The, the foliage, I'm going to bring some of it forward and I'm going to push some of it back and I can still add some more of those as we go. So the face is what I'm going to work mainly on today. Now, for those of you who are here live, 25 of you, I'm super stoked to have you guys all here. Don't be shy. Feel free to say hello. But if you're just comfortable watching, that is fine also. I really appreciate your support for the channel with liking the video or even after you've watched it to comment on the videos. I get all those comments and will definitely reply to all of them. It just really helps me build up the channel. So I, I thank you in advance. <laughs> and um, what I'm going to be doing here is we're going to, I'm going to slowly build up the face because I, that's where more of my focal point is, especially right here. I did put something under her eye. I'm just going to play around with that and see how that goes. And so I'm just going to go in and start laying down some color. But before I do, oh, Dreamweaver is my big cheer, cheering. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. But oh, I wanted to say, that's what I was going to say. Um, when the, uh, when I'm doing these, I'm doing part ones and part twos. And sometimes I think people are watching the part one and thinking they, they got it. But actually, a lot of the magic happens in part two. So like if you guys missed the Daisy May Owl, part two, I think, was one of my best videos yet. And so I would definitely go back after you watch part one to, to watch part two, because part two, I'm just getting to the point where I get to put all the pencils in, the, the abstracting, the details. And so Part two, there's a lot, that's where a lot of the magic happens because you got to block in and build everything up in part one. So definitely come back and watch part two or come back on Thursday to see this piece develop. So what I want to talk a little bit about is my colors here. Um, I actually referred to Pan Pastel's portrait set. This isn't the portrait set in a whole, but it has most of the main colors in it. This ultramarine blue and this diarolide shade and the permanent red are basically your cores for mixing color. And you can almost mix all of these colors I have on here with just those three. So they work really well together when they're on the palette because if I want to push something more red, I can put the red in. If I want to brighten something up and go more orange. I can put more red and orange in. It's just like how you're mixing regular paints. It's just a little bit more on the piece instead of on the side. So a lot of times if I'm putting down like say this ultramarine, I can convert that ultramarine if you watch into a um, violet by just I can I can do like this um, magenta dark. Well, this will actually go to the purple violet. And so that's really a beautiful color. And then if you take that ultramarine, I'm going to try to lean this on here so it's not shaking. If you take the ultramarine and then you say you add the red to it, the red is more warmer. So this is a cool, the magenta mixed into ultramarine is cooler. So it's going to be a brighter, fresher violet. If I go into more of an orangey, you know, red, that's going to make it into more of this magenta extra dark vibe. So if I, and that's a little bit warmer. So you got to go back and forth when you're mixing this heavily, but it's just interesting to see that you can mix almost everything you want on here. Like this is a diarolide. If I put the diarolide on here, 
and I'm wiping off my soft tool onto a microfiber towel. But even if I just add black to this diarolide and I go back and forth, you're going to get the diarolide extra dark, which is a green, yellow green. These are really beautiful colors mixed together, even like this red with the diarolide. Then you're going into this burnt sienna vibe, but it's a little bit punchier and a little bit more vibrant. So it's when you have all these three on your palette, I can push and pull them into any of the colors to make them go more yellow, more warm, more cool. And so if I want to use this um, permanent green here, I can even push that more to the diarolide color by just adding the yellow here. So it's just, it, it just gives you more of a range. I'm, I'm really excited to work um, with it with all of these colors together. Like it'll go more red iron oxide. If I add the red to it. And then if I wanted to uh, add a little peach to it and get it to peach out to go more peach, I can do the magenta with the diarolide. And then once I add a tint to it, then that's going to be peachy. And you see that coming out. So when I'm saying I'm working dark to light, I'm putting all these darks down and then depending on what I put on the next layer, it's going to um, come up that way. So you can see a lot of this with skin tones because I'm going to use a lot more of my tints. And so if I have these colors underneath and I go add some tints onto them, and this is the um, yellow oxide tint. I'm just putting it on top. I'm not using white, but I could just use white, you guys. I'm just, um, this is what I use mostly because I don't, white is a little stark for me. But you can see how it'll bring up these colors. So it's good to start practicing and seeing what, when you mix in and layer in, what you're going to get. And let's see here, I just want to make sure. <laughs> it's so true. Part two is the icing on the yummy pastels cake. I love that temple. <laughs> that peach, yeah, the peach color is really beautiful and it's very close to the burnt sienna. So, but just adding a little bit more magenta will bring it more peachy pink. And if you're going red and you want to warm that up, add more of the red. So all of these core colors can be added into these others or you're mixing from scratch. And, and mixing from scratch with pan pastel is a little bit labor in my opinion unless you're mixing on the piece. And so if I want to just get that violet purple and I just want it right away and put it on a layer and not mix, I just want to grab for it. And that's why pastellas have a lot of color ranges. Um, in their arsenal. <laughs> we need all the colors. So, all right, so I'm going to go in. Let's see, what was the color? Okay, I tinted with the yellow. It'll either be yellow ochre or yellow oxide. Um, they've changed the name. Um, this is just my favorite tint. This is also a raw umber, and this is a raw umber. I think this is the core. Yeah, the raw umber core. This is a great neutral to use with... Um, with a lot of colors. I really love love using that with a lot of colors. So I'm going to go in here and just start putting some um, colors in the shadows. So say I was, I'm not really going to use a lot of blue as my dominant, but if I put this down in here, and then if you added like the reds over it, so this dark the permanent red, then it'll turn into a violet. But see, I have to mix that 
in here and that's not necessarily what I want to spend a lot of my time doing. So I just have that magenta extra dark on here because I just know I love that. And then I can add a pop of these brighter colors to bring them um, up or push them back. So I have a little bit right here. And, and with faces, especially when you're new, it's definitely worth to go slow. I'm not going to bring a whole lot out. Like I'm not going to rush because the face is small things can go big really quick. And, um, so I like to add violets and purples, the magentas into the shadows. I can also tap some blues in there. Like I said, That'll add a little bit more diversity to that violet. And when I mix it in, it's really pretty. And it's gonna take a little bit to get this popping, but I'm gonna focus on the face on this video today. So I'm guaranteed to at least finish the face in the two sessions. Now for the lips, that's the um, red iron oxide. I can always pop in a little bit. I'll be going back and forth to get the color I want to get on the lips. But the upper lips always a little bit darker than the lower lip. And I'm basically just blocking in you guys like this whole time is is basically that's what it's all about. Thanks for the hearts. Mary, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> well, awesome. I'm glad you want to learn more about pan pastel. I think that's why we're all here. We're and plus I just have a wonderful community for people to talk to. And that is always great. But I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. We got 29 that have showed up today. I'm so grateful for all of you being here today. So for me, I'm a little bit more not a rule follower in the sense of like um, having solid rules. I'm, I'm basically just mixing up the colors to go into my shadows and then I'm going to start pulling things out. And on the black paper, I will say figurative work is a little bit more of a pull. Um, I'm going to start doing a few pieces where I, I've done it, uh, I've tested it out where I go on the ivory paper and then I just use black pan pastel and put all my darks in there. And, um, that, um, then I pull everything up that way. So that's a great way to. Cheryl, welcome to chat. I'm so glad that you came by. It's Cheryl in Colorado Springs here. Love your work. You gave me such a passion for pan pastels. I can't wait to get better. I am so glad you're here, Cheryl. We're definitely all about building up a community here. So I'm not sure how much I want this mushroom to pull out from her face. So that's going to be a journey. And I already know that going in. And so I'm just going to block this in. I can push it back. Nothing's permanent in pastel. That's the really cool fact about it all. And then I'm going to touch in a little bit of the burnt sienna in some of these spots because this can all be brought up. Now the, the trick with skin tones, the one thing I want to show you, it's not as easy to show you on the piece, but you can go um, dark skin tones, really, really beautiful skin tones by using the darker burnt sienna. And you can mix in that magenta with it. It's just a beautiful, beautiful skin tones. So depending on how dark your skin is, is how much black you can put in there or bring out with a tint. So I love mixing my skin tones with color. And the reason why you want to do a little bit multiple of a mix there, if I did everything in burnt sienna, 
the whole face, she would look really flat. So another thing to think about is you wanna create some diversity in your piece by adding some multiple shades and color. So the skin tones, Burnt Sienna is definitely the, the main color that I use, but you wanna tap in some of these other colors to definitely create some interest. And then I can take that tint and start, you know, bringing up and you're going to start seeing a skin tone for however light your skin is that you want to match, then you would bring that up with a tint. And then if you're putting some dark highlights in some darker skin, then you would be a little bit more limited on your tint, but you could go back and forth and you're going to get that value change with your darks. So, you can see how that just adding that tint and it's not just the burnt sienna tint. I'm using the yellow ochre tint. I'm just going to call it yellow ochre guys. It's called yellow oxide now, but I'm so used to it. But I'm diversifying the colors by even changing the tint. So that is something with skin tones that can really um, change your, your piece. So it's something to consider when you're practicing and Practicing is definitely the key word here is you want to do a lot of that because it's just not something you're going to get down right away. And I find that I feel like I still have a lot to learn. I've just made quite a few faces. So I have a few under my belt. So I will take this um, burnt sienna and bring it in quite a few areas here and then I'll be tapping in some of the other colors on the next layer but you can see I already have the this magentas on the shadows and I know I'm going to be coming in with a tint to bring out these highlights that are in the face so when I'm working with like say a reference I know I'm going to come in here with like tints but in here is going to be where I'm going to keep the shades and the shadows. So that's where my brain is. So why I'm working. Hi, Sharon. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I, this is my biggest chat yet, you guys. I got 32 people here. Welcome. 32 is my goal this week. I'm on week. This is week four, you guys, of doing um, lives. So um, what a journey it's been. It's been going really well. I've really appreciated everyone's encouragement and support. And if you want to find an inexpensive way to help support me and give back, uh, definitely liking the videos and commenting um, after the, you can't comment during the live, but when the video is all done, um, any of the video replays you watch, commenting really helps. Um, it's a great way to give back to, to um, for me and it's and it doesn't cost you anything so I really appreciate it um, let's see here I have to show you guys I got uh, real quick this pen Lori's here I think she's listening but Lori got this to, for me for my um, I think it was Christmas or birthday but it's this really cool pen and I just keep it here to inspire me about rainbow and so I have it here and I just keep it on my little easel it's amazing how much your brain goes blank, like when you're doing the live. <laughs> like I gotta have any, all my memories. So Lori, thank you for that. I really love that. Laura, I feel like we should have asked before, I apologize, do you mind when we try doing our versions of your demos, not for sale of course, but ourselves or gift or practice? So all of my classes and my demos and all of that type of stuff, if you're inspired by me and you're doing it from me, I think the biggest thing is just no, not selling it, of course, but um, just, you know, tagging me, giving me credit on social media, those types of things are really helpful for me. And it also is a great etiquette. So if you are practicing this on your own and I'm not doing line art for these. All of my real in-depth classes, I do line art. The one I'm working on right now, can't wait to share that one with you. The line art is coming together really nicely. So on these, I'm not giving away line art because they're more demos. So I'm here to build up this community here on YouTube and I don't know what the future holds, but yeah, at this time, um, these are gonna be just demos. 
So it's a great question, Laura. I, I think that's a great question. So I think with any artist, if you are, you know, even if you went and made the whole thing look like mine or it was even similar, I think giving those artists their shout outs and their credit from where you got inspired from until you find your own style. Um, I, like I've even seen some people, you know, take my classes and there's a lot of elements in there that are from my classes. So it's always great when they say, well, you know, this piece is inspired um, from, from Dawn and, and you give the person credit. So I think credit's just the, the big thing is to do that throughout your pieces. And you know, we all are learning. So even the masters learn from each other. It's, it's, I highly suggest to get those skills and those techniques built up. And there's nothing wrong with learning from other people and using their work to learn from. So I think that's, definitely why I'm here is I want to really make pastel be a medium that is a more approachable for people. I think there's a lot of misconceptions that, you know, it'll just come right off the page and that it's um, not as durable and it's actually one of the most archival mediums out there, which is surprising, right? And um, so I'm just here because I just felt like in the beginning for me, there wasn't a lot out there of people to talk to about it. And um, it's an amazing medium. I just, I can't say enough good things about it. And I've done all of them. I've done mixed, well, I, the only medium I haven't done is oils and I've been told that this is the closest thing to oils. So what do you mean when you say line art? Valerie, line art is something I give away in my full classes on my website. I have a whole bunch of, um, more in-depth classes like catching the light and I give the line art to the image. So it'd be like me giving you this digitally and you can print it out and transfer it and then paint along with me. I, I think line art is really powerful for the beginner. I don't think we have the capability to take in so much information all at once. And it allows the artist to really, um, the beginner artist especially, to focus on the painting and what the teacher is talking about. So you'll get the line art in my classes, you print them out, you transfer them on your piece, and then I walk you through all that, I'll give you way more details in there, and then you can just enjoy and learn. And then, you know, down the road, you can branch out and do your own line art. Um, create your own drawings and transfer them onto the piece. And so um, I just like to offer that to my students because I think it's been a really great way to connect and um, have them learn a lot faster. Hi, Chrisella, welcome. Laura, I started and still work in oils and pastels are very similar, yes. So do you actually show and teach the drawing part or do you only offer a traceable? Okay, Valerie, so for these lives, I'm just doing um, demos. So I'm not teaching you how to draw this or walk you through the drawing. Um, in my classes on my website, I totally walk you through the, um, I, I start by line art. I don't, I don't draw with you in all of them. And catching the light, I have a lot of um, building techniques where I show you um, reference images and then those reference images, I show you how to build your own unique piece and give you techniques to build your own in catching in the light. My next class, I'm going to be showing you the same thing, how to take the line art um, and use those and build your own pieces and it's a uh, layering technique and things like that. I hope that answers your questions. You can definitely go to my website and go check out the classes because there's a whole sales page. It talks about everything that you're gonna learn, what's in there, the supply list. Um, I also have coupons inside the free area for $10 off all my classes, so. Okay, Paula, welcome. I'm ready to submit a finished piece for a context. It's a contest, practicing first gave me a lot of confidence to dive in and enjoy. That's great, Paula. I'm glad you're, you're practicing. I've never even entered a contest. That sounds pretty exciting. I hope that goes well for you. Yeah, the line art is the basic outline of the drawing. Thank you, Laura. 
Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of the skin tones here. Just using this burnt sienna to block in. And a lot of this is about layering. So you wanna um, really be patient with that. Like this is, I go over probably at least three times on a layer. So. So I've got some of this face blocked in. Um, I'm gonna go for the eyes because I think, like I've said before in these lives, the eyes are the the windows to the soul. And I really think that sounds cheesy, but it's so true though. I used to do my eyes last and now I'm kind of like, um, I try to do them first. And I'm gonna come through I think on here with a smaller tool and work on this. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in some of this raw umber. It's a lot lighter than you would think for this eye. So Valerie, I don't teach the drawing. Um, I, I will show you in some of them if they, um, how to build from a reference, because I do use a lot of references in my pieces and um, in Catching the Light, that's what I do. So I will show you some of the steps in that in Catching the Light um, from my references. And then I provide the drawing line art for you. So yeah, it's basically line art based or you can draw your own. And um, you can work off the line art for inspiration. I do show some of those steps in uh, Catching in the Light, but I'm not as much uh, teaching you how to draw this because that's basically my style of drawing. And so um, I let you use the line art so you can follow along. I hope that helps. Okay, so I, I was focused on the eyes and I'm going to put a little bit, I'll probably come back with pencil, but I'm gonna put a little bit of magenta in here, just in the shadow area. And I wanna make sure that camera I think what I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna blow this up just a hair. It'll be just a second. So you guys, the only thing with this me blowing this up is you have to remind me if, um, if when I, um, so I don't leave it. Oh, it's not gonna let me do that with the palette. So let me blow it up just on the screen. Okay, stand by. I'll just have that blown up a little bit so it's a little bit better to see. There we go. Okay, so that's blown up a little bit because it's really dark right now. And that's the thing is you just want to build up slowly. I'm going to, I love my eyes to be green on my pieces. It's one of my favorite colors. So I'm going to tap in some of this. Um, bright yellow green, extra dark. She's gonna start taking shape here. It doesn't take long. Oh, thank you, Lori, I really appreciate it. I'm so glad you're here today. That's awesome, so my ping worked. <laughs>
Okay, and then watch how what happens, like I'm gonna use this yellow um, oxide and I'm just gonna start bringing up the eyes because um, I'm gonna do it slowly because it's really um, quick on how it changes and it's a small area. Welcome Debbie. I miss most so I'll have to come and watch the beginning later. Yeah, you're, you're basically, um, I'm just at the spot where I'm laying in color. I did most of the darks before I came on and the drawing. So yeah, you haven't missed too much yet, but welcome. I'm glad you're here and thanks for, for your comment. Thanks for those hearts. I love the hearts. Okay, so I have to be a little careful right here because I don't know how much I'm gonna wanna bring that up. And I also have to bring up the eye to match that. So sometimes I'll be going in with pencils and um, things like that, but a lot of my dark lines are really showing right now and those are gonna be buried. And it takes a little bit to now I'm working with the black that I put down, not against it. And I'm definitely not about perfection. I, I don't want it to be everything to be perfect. I'm actually trying to loosen up more. So I'm gonna pop in just a little bit of this diarolide And that's in the warm green family, the yellow green family. I always like to put a little bit of shade and merge in the iris. And I don't want it to be And you know, if you end up liking the colored pencils for this part, you, I mean, not the colored pencils, the pastel pencils, um, feel free to use those. Uh, I mean, I'm definitely gonna go back in there. These are not done. Um, even if we wanna add a little bit of this burnt sienna in the eye, just playing around, seeing what I like. Okay. Oh, my pink, my ping work, Lori. I'm so glad. Okay, so I'm going to work on adding a little bit of dimension to the eyes here and some color. I want this to be a little darker, so I'm just popping in some black. I want this line here. I have to be careful with this right here because I don't want it to look lazy. It will go lazy real quick. I'm just going to start popping in some other colors. I usually work all around, but with the face today, I'm just going to really try to stay in this area so we can see that come up more. So a lot of this is patience. 
And when, when people do faces, they give up pretty quick. Um, really just reflect on how many faces you've made before you give up because I've probably made quite a few. I mean, I've made hundreds and hundreds of paintings. And so like when, like someone asks me, you know, do I teach the drawing in my class or, you know, that's a great question. But to expand on that a little farther, you know, I have 25 plus years into creating plus the six years is just hand pastel. Um, I had mixed media and all of that before. So when I'm teaching these classes and doing these um, demos, remember that I have a lot more showing up time. And so it's all about showing up. And the more you show up, the better you're going to get. And it's just, it might not look like mine because you got to remember I have a lot more experience. And I think that's really hard to forget when we're learning. I mean, it's hard to remember when we're learning, you know, like, um, one of the biggest one, uh, impactful things I find, um, is when you're on Instagram and say you like somebody and like uh, an abstract artist, you want to do abstract and, um, you go and you, you try a few abstract paintings and you're like, oh my gosh, this is really hard. And, and, I'm, and you stop because you're like, I'm not any good at this. And maybe you've done three. And, but go look at that artist who you like and admire and really go count how many uh, pieces they've made and post it. And some of them they probably haven't even shown you. So when you're comparing yourself, a lot of it's just time and skill and learning the techniques and, and, and actually practicing. We have to have some pieces that don't look good to get us where we want to go. I'm using a bigger tool here and I think that's fine. I'm just um, intuitively going in on this um, eye here. I know this side's going to be a little bit more in the shadows. So I'm um, just bringing some of the blue to mix in with that violet. It's the ultramarine blue. And then right around here is going to be my light. So once I got this mixed in here, I can go over it with a tint and bring it up. And so in the shadows, I will normally keep it to cools because shadows are being pushed back. And, um, and they go cool, cool colors push things back in the eye and warm brings things forward and brings it forward into the piece. So um, that's something to remember is to learn your warms and cools. Like this magenta here is a warmer magenta and um, I don't want these lines to be perfect, but I do want them to show up. Hi, Peg. It's so great getting to see you do the face with all of the shading and light and the colors involved. I really like doing faces. Yeah, the faces are, are one of my favorites too. Um, I like animals and faces, but faces I spend a little bit more time on. They're not as easy for me in the sense of like an owl. Um, I think there's a lot of thought you have to put into the face a little bit more. Thank you for the hearts. <laughs> Um, but they're worth it. It's, it's really fun to kind of find and discover your own style. And if I can give any, um, suggestions out for that, you know, is just really showing up and drawing and not formal drawing, just sketching and playing around with ideas and seeing what comes up with, like, even if you took, like, for instance, say I got this face. And this face is not necessarily my style. It's very high end, very polished, very perfect. But this face, I could trace the eyes and the nose with my tracing paper. And then I build a face around it, get all the core structure. It's all about structure. So once you have the structure of a face going, Find a face that you like. Say, I like this one. 
So I'm going to take this one over and over and over again. I'm going to trace the face. And then once I get that down, my me muscle memory is getting down and I can start drawing it on my own when I'm just sketching in bed or whatever. But it's okay to trace it. It's okay. People transfer stuff all the time and use references that way. And then you can take and add whimsical things to your face and, and play with, find your own mark making, find what you like. If you want to make your face wonkier or, you know, ch change the proportions off a little bit so they look a little different, you gotta, you'll find your style and figure out what you like. So it's just about practicing. So in this area, I know I want it to be a little warmer. So I'm playing with this red and the iron oxide because I'm going to go over it. And this might go back and forth. Um, I'm just getting things down. Welcome everyone. I got 30 people here today. I'm so happy that you're here. So it's going to look like a little bit of a clown for the moment and that's okay. This is that uncomfortable stage. And now I'm going to start, you know what, I'm going to pop a little bit of this yellow in here and I'm going to pop a little bit of it up here in the forehead. And I'm going to put a little bit of it here. So this is what they call like an underpainting or blocking in. They're getting in this, we're just blocking our colors in knowing I'm going to be putting colors over this. And pan pastel is very, you can layer, 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 you guys. It's, it's on this paper. I use a UART sanded um, pastel paper. This is the dark. And so um, I know I can do a lot of layers and I can also use an eraser to make changes this paper takes all of that. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to make this swoop. I'm probably going to make it a neutral, just having the line in there, but the face is still going to be colored the same. So you're going to see the line, but I'm going to copy the colors. Hi, Bunny. Welcome. Hello, Dawn and chat peoples. Oh, it's Marla. And I live in Tidewater, Virginia. Dawn, I see your classes you offer on Ivy Newport site and I've always been intrigued by Pan Pastel. That's awesome, Bunny. I'm, I'm glad that you've seen my, my classes on StudioWorks. Um, most of my classes are on my own website, so um, I also sell them there. Um, there's one class that's still over on their site and I'll, I'll be releasing it on my own website here soon. So yeah, that's great. You've discovered me over there. I'm really glad to hear that you're here today. So welcome. I have soft pastels, but have recently been diagnosed with asthma and I'm thinking of purchasing the pan. So definitely bunny, many people in here. Um, there's been at least two that I can recall that have uh, asthma. Um, pan pastel doesn't shed as much. So, um, so far they, they're saying that they really have had a great time with it and it's, hasn't flared up their asthma. Okay. Yeah, it's Laura and I think, I don't want to misspell, but miss say, so I'm going to let that person ch chime in if they, 
All right, so we're going with the rainbow look. It's going pretty good so far. I'm going to bring in a little bit of magenta color here, and then I'm going to start bringing up these cheeks and stuff. Now, as you notice, I, I don't switch tools. I use these soft tools and I'll, I'll use them on these lower layers continuously and I wipe off between colors. So you can use the same tool and I'm not as concerned about contaminating colors because I'm trying to create color harmony. And when you're doing the color harmony, you want to tap those colors into each other. So I'll be going back and forth here. Because when you bring in a tint and it's too light, you want to resaturate it. You can bring in some of that pigment back over it again. So this is definitely going to have that uncomfortable stage. If you've been here and been on my lives, I call the ugly stage the uncomfortable stage because you're just basically at that spot where it's not comfortable. You don't know exactly if it's going to go in that direction you want. But after time, when you've showed up for quite a few pieces, you start seeing a pattern and um, you, you start trusting yourself. I know that this is a journey and it's going to uh, evolve. So I'm just trusting it. And when I have those shadows under there and I'm bringing a lighter color up, you can even accent that by, you know, not going in all the way. And so I'll have to be working and getting these values up and then I might be pushing back and going back and forward. So that's just part of how I work. I think a lot of people work going back and forth unless they're going directly from a reference image that they're trying to copy. Some will work all the way through that. For me, that's, um, I don't work that way. I like to have a little bit of spontaneity in, and so I will do a push and pull and that's just part of my process. I'm going to work on these brighter spots here. And so like as you guys have seen too, when I um, have a, uh, a part one and a part two, I have 48 hours to look at that piece, evaluate it and go, okay, what do I want to change on there? Um, do I like it? How am I feeling about it? And that is really important to me to have that time. I think we, we all have to stand back and reflect a little bit. And it's a little bit of a high expectation to think I'm going to have this all done in one sitting, you know? So, so another thing is, is like, I have also done where I put pan pastel as my underpainting and then I go over it with sticks and that's a whole nother ball game. So the, the blendability though in pan pastel is really beautiful. Um, I love it. And, um, and you know, you can stop and go whenever you want. There's no rules. So it's looking a little ghostly because I'm not working around the whole piece. We'll see how long this lasts because I might have to work around the piece.
Okay. I can't believe it's been an hour already. That's why I'm so glad I did the uh, the um, the blocking in for the black. Because if I and I will say that the faces for me go in the uncomfortable stage a little longer. So I you guys are going to be surprised when it gets developed. I just have to go slow in the beginning. That's just how I roll. I'll show you something really quick, just so you could see this. So let's see if this will show up. So this is a piece that I'm working on with the faces and it just takes time to build that up. So um, they do get there. It's just, you have to be patient. They slowly come out of the darkness and in into the light. <laughs> I was hesitant to do a face because um, they, they, they just take a little bit longer. I've been asked to do a class on this one. And I, I think what I, I'm going to do is, is simplify the you know, line art. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I've, I have this one class I'm working on. It's taken me a little longer to do classes since I started this live. And the lines look really strong. But when I'm going along, I'm, I'm burying them as I go. So that just takes a little bit of time. I really want this to be more of a peachy look right here. Welcome everyone. I'm so glad you're all here. We have 31 in uh, online today. That's really exciting. So I will bury this a little bit because I want it to be there subtly, but I want it to be a part of the skin. So I'm working on that right now. The pencils come in like on the next, they'll probably be part two for the pencils if you want to see all the pencil work. Um, definitely come back for that because I probably won't get to the pencils today. But I'm starting to get that foundation now where I'm starting to feel like I can move a little quicker. Thanks for all the hearts. I love the hearts. So you guys, I'm almost two thirds the way to getting the um, extra chat features on YouTube where you guys, I can have subscribers and um, have extra emotes and all of that fun interaction. They'll have super chats. 
So I'm really excited for that. So you guys watching and subscribing and um, liking the content really helps me get that faster, but it's all on watch time hours. So you guys watching uh, really helps. So thank you for watching all my videos. I really appreciate it. Okay, so you can see how I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on some areas than others. That's the thing with the face is I feel like on a face you can make a really quick change that will change a lot and um, it, it can go really fast and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, what did I do? So this part's gonna come a little slower. And, and I have to be a little bit lighter on loading my soft tools. Like right here I was a little heavy but I know that's gonna be a brighter spot. And it looks cartoony because those lines are still showing, but that will tone down, tone down as I go. I'm gonna put a little bit of this with the, you know what? I'm gonna go this and the magenta here. And it's amazing the subtleties, like if you just look back into your camera, it really helps to kind of give you a different point of view of your piece. I'm gonna blend this in a little bit. So I'm wiping off my tool quite frequently, especially when I'm in a blending mode. So if I'm just trying to create a transition or tone, take something off like too much black or just smooth out some of the lines, you're going to start seeing it. And if this, this going back and forth, it's all about patience and your drive to want to make it look a certain way. So for me, I'm, I might touch it more and you might touch it less, but uh, you can see how it takes a while to get this part really looking layered and diverse with richness of color. And that's what, if you're practicing, you know, even just practicing an eye would be something to do uh, quickly. Like instead of going and trying to make this whole piece and do it, you know, go take a face and trace the face and then try to work on skin color and getting your values in. And um, it really helps. Or if you have your own whimsical uh, drawing, you want to try, you know, uh, but taking the time to really just 
figure out how to lay down the colors and the values is, is practice. So it's, it's worth the time to um, do that for yourself. We always, you know, one thing I, I'm finding from a lot of students too is they want to instantly make something that they can show and frame and, and all of that. But, you know, a lot of times we're growing at that part, you know, when we're taking classes from people and learning and um, just giving yourself the grace that not everything has to, you know, show up to be frameable or keepable, you know, just doing some eyes and face and practicing those bits can be really powerful if you take the pressure off. So I'm loving these these um, colors combined, these, the, the red, the permanent red with the diarolide shade is really pretty. And if I want to warm that up, I can but I'll probably be going back and forth on here. And I might want her to have bright cheeks. I, I'm, I'm not limiting myself here. I didn't do a whole piece in advance to figure out how I wanted it to be exactly. So you're on this journey with me, guys. <laughs> Let's see what we got in chat. 32 people. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, Loretta. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for the compliment. Ellen. Okay, you guys are chatting. Peg, I'm so happy that, that you're excited that um, I'm doing this today. You know, especially, you know, I know you've taken a lot of my classes and I've only done one figurative in a class. So I have grown so much and um, I'm really excited to maybe come up with a class that would be, you know, friendly to beginners and intermediates and um, really be something where you can feel successful in. And, you know, I can maybe even throw in some drawing tips and, and things like that. I do do that. I did that in Catching the Light, but I'll, I'll definitely consider that in the next one. Ellen, do you work differently with your colors when working with portraits rather than animals? I mean the order of your colors. So um, I don't really, <laughs> um, I do, I would say I, um, I'm more conscious of what I'm putting in on a portrait than what I would do for an animal because I know this is a skin tone. So I like to rainbow things out as you guys can see. So for me, I'm doing a similar thing, but I'm a little bit more uh, slower, a little bit more conservative and thoughtful with what I'm putting down because faces are just so, uh, they're just, there's so much more to them than an animal. I think I can make an animal really wonky and whimsical and I can pull it off with a little bit more freedom and abstract. Um, but with the face, I just have to think about my bringing up the uh, colors more. So I'll be more into the tints and my under, uh, my blocking in and my underpainting and then pulling them out more. So I would say I'm a little bit more conscious of that. But my palette isn't much different from what I've used. Um, today I threw in the ultramarine, the diarolide shade and the red. Um, permanent red to really show you like those are the cores and I can mix in out of all of those most of these colors so that is all in the portrait set for pan pastel the colors that um they also have the raw umber they have a tint and they have a lot more tints in the portrait set I, I don't think you need all those tints and um but I'm just kind of using a little bit of that and they have the green oxide in there because green is the complement of the, the red. So they really try to create a balance in there. Okay, so I'm gonna try to bring this up here again. And I think what I want up here is a little bit more of this. Let's 
See, it's amazing just one little color tapping and how it can change the, the look. And see how those lines start getting buried, that it'll start taking a little bit more of a shape. And these are where those little subtle moments are. Like you, you don't want to rush the nose, especially I'm working with a big tool. You guys would probably maybe work with the applicator or if you want, it's, it's, you really have to get, I've used this tool for six years, you guys, like you find a tool that you love and then you just start using it all the time. And now I don't have to switch tools. I will use the triangle tool sometimes, but I, um, and some of the other ones, but I'm not, switching all the different shapes. My black and white work that I do, the black pan pastel, I will um, switch the shapes a little bit more because I'm working with just one color. I went a little bright right there on that edge, but that's fine. So now I'm doing a little dance right here. I might blend in a little bit of this line here and bury a line. I'm going to bury this line with the mushroom so it looks like it's part of her. And that just that change really made a huge difference see so you have to do those things slowly or you're not going to see that see it and a lot of things i'm seeing you might not see yet because you're overwhelmed with just learning you know some of the basics and and it just takes time okay i'm going to check up on chat here real quick That's wonderful, Ellen. Um, I, I, I think I answered your question there. I'm so glad that you asked it. Thank you. And in my full classes, I, I go over, you know, I have a set that I just use for the classes and I'm trying to get it down to a 20 set here where I'm using um, mostly a core. And I think as this goes on, I'm, I, I'm feeling like in the next couple of months, I'm going to really be able to nail that down a little bit more where I can make something smaller so it's more approachable to people. And I have some classes that use a lot less colors too. Andrea, welcome. I think that's your first time in chat. Welcome. Awesome. Welcome, Karen. You're here today. That's great. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for coming in and saying hi, Karen. I really appreciate that. Ellen, thanks for the compliment. So I think on this one, I'm going to pull up a little bit more and then I'm going to before, let's see, it's almost, yeah. And I think what I'll do is I'll let, I'll pull up a little bit more and then I'm going to pull up some of the background, you know, work on her hair a little bit. And then, um, so you can see that I can't get all of her values done yet because her, her hair and all the other things haven't been put in. So that can be a little challenging when I don't have all of that brought up yet. I've got to put her spark of life in there. Make sure we get that before we go, right? Oh, see, if I get one of these pencils on my hand, I'll just start going all in on the pencils. And I, I promised myself I couldn't do that today because I wanted to get this 
portrait at a certain level. <laughs> Let's see here. I mean, she's got a ways. I'm also using a really dark tool, so a lot of my um, brights will get knocked down a little bit quicker. I really don't want them to be crazy bright yet. Okay, so I'm going to bring this spot up a hair. Just right here, like the light's hitting. This is a nine by 12 size. So I had to promise myself, make a deal with myself that um, I could only do nine by 12s for this. I really love working in 12 by 16 to be quite honest. Um, I just think it allows me a lot more freedom and I like painting a little bit bigger. Thank you, Ellen. She looks bigger. Yeah, I got her blown up here today. And, and I could go with a more painterly look on her, but or I could go and, and smooth her out. So remember, this is just the blocking end stage. I haven't even really played with all of this yet. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So the harshness of those lines start calming down a little bit once I get to a certain spot. I don't know if I love that. So whenever I'm adding black to this, it's think of it like you're going into a shade. So whenever I add black to any of the colors, I'm just knocking it back into a shade. And that is how Pan Pastel is structured. So I'm working with the system and um, that is really helpful to know that um, when you put black in, that's what you're doing. And then when you're putting white in, you're, you're, you're bringing it up to a tint. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do, she's at a pretty good spot here. I'm gonna smooth out a little bit of this. Just smooth her out a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit more, and bring up her forehead just a little bit get kind of that creaminess. So the creaminess and all of that doesn't really get till after the next layer of the blocking end stage. So your tools start working a little bit different. It gets a little creamier and um, the blendability just starts going up a factor. So if you're still having a hard time on a layer, that means you just don't have enough pastel down and you got to put more layers on. 
one of the biggest things I get from people taking a class is, is they don't feel like it's as bright as mine. And that's because I am um, layering and layering and layering. This paper takes a lot of layers and I like to build my layers up slowly on some things. And so So some of those whites are looking pretty bright right now. And they don't have that creamy skin. And that's just going to take a little bit more time. So you can see how it's starting to come together. But I would say I'm on, you know, the second layer on some spots and the third on some. So Don't want that to get too pulled up, but I want it to look like a neck. Okay. And so sometimes you can't see this, but I'm mixing onto the, um, let me see. There we go. Let me make sure she's focus. Okay, so I can mix on here a little bit. And that will knock it down to where it's not as harsh going on to my piece. Because if I just take that tint and start going, it'll shed on here. So if I want to push it into my tool, that's, that's what I'm doing here. And if I want to add some burnt sienna in that and knock it down, just trying to find a happy spot right here. There'll always be parts of the face you, you have to go back and forth on. Like I'll probably bury this a lot more. I just want it to be a subtle that it's a line. I just like that quirkiness. I'm just trying to bring up the values in certain areas. How did I learn how to do all these colors of the skin? I just started practicing. I knew I wanted a rainbow look and um, I um, started, I just started practicing. I mean, my first faces, if you go look on my Instagram and go down, I, I will say back when really early, um, I, I love Jane Davenport, I love Juliet Crane. Um, definitely a shout out to them, um, but that was early, early. That was like probably 10 years ago. Um, I love that color, that vibrancy. So I um, always have tried to add color. And then I also learned just on my own, just showing up over and over again, I would do a face and it looked really flat. And I just learned to add colors and I also studied um, references and and watched other artists and made it my own and yeah just a lot of it's just practice really you guys just showing up and not intellectualizing it but getting yourself to make a lot of faces um there's a, an amazing artist um i have a piece of her work she's a friend online um jean marie She's, she's a, a, one of my inspirations as an artist. Um, uh, she, she does amazing things to faces and are really quirky too. And um, I love her. But yeah, it's just finding people that inspired me and then f getting an idea of what I wanted to work towards. So if I know I wanted to work towards making a more colorful look, then I just practiced that and I started going, well, I'm the rainbow person. And then I would try to rainbow everything out 
and then I got to find what I like about it. What's the happy medium of that, you know? Okay, at three o'clock here, I think I'm going to go and put a few little spots in here. Thank you for your question, Peg. Okay. So it's definitely got its structure there. It, it, it needs a little bit more refinement, but you're going to see once I bring pencils in and things like that, I'm going to make an adjustment and pulling out a little bit. Whoops. You guys get to go on for the ride here. Well, I guess it's going to be that. My camera. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to start bringing in some of the surrounding pieces because the face isn't going to be looking where I want it until I start bringing in some other values and blocking in some of that. So we at least got to the first part here and um, I, I think she's looking good, but I definitely want to play with some spots with her, especially her lips are kind of, yeah, let me just, like her lips are so dark that she looks a little bit cartoony and that's going to take a little bit of time. So let me give a, let me put a few minutes into the lips. I'm going to hit a lighter wand. So I'm, I'm taking this, the lip and I'm just bringing it up a bit so I can, I'll probably put some dark to bump it back, but I want to make these lines here blend a little bit so they're not so harsh. So please excuse my arm in here. I, I can't really do it in any other way. And then it's going to start looking a little bit more natural. So it just takes a little bit of time in this area because I want to bring my highlight out and So you can see each area just takes a lot of time to really play with. And that's why I was nervous about demoing a face. <laughs> we haven't even got to the pencils yet. So this is just the beginning. Um, 
Thank you, Debbie. Welcome. I appreciate that. Did the portrait catch your light? I struggled with the skin tones and I even erased it three times. I did finish it, but I think I get it better now. Yeah, Peg, you know, the catching a light portrait, that was really an advanced piece for that class. I feel like I could have, I, I have to say when I'm um, learning as a teacher, that was one of my, I think that was my second big class I did. And what I've learned as being a teacher along the way is I want to bring you up along with me. And that class was more like, here's everything I know how to do. Uh, here's the tools to do it. And um, I, I think on that portrait piece, it was pretty advanced. So um, definitely give yourself some grace on that. I would, with that piece, I would take those skills. There's a ton of great information in there. I just think I would do it a couple times and keep trying uh, to get that piece to look exactly how mine is. I have so many details in that. Like even if you just took the face and worked on it and not done all of the butterflies and everything uh, would give you, if you did a few of those, um, definitely more practice. Because if that's your first big portrait that you've done and then you're going in and um, trying to make it look like something you want to frame or keep, it, it, it's hard. So I, I definitely think that one piece is pretty, pretty advanced. So you can see how I'm just taking some time on the lips and I'm going back and forth. Um, like this is not the, the end for me on these. It's just, I'll probably, I like going back with pencils and but you know, you can, you don't even need to do pencils. You can just do this too. It's just, um, I like doing pencils. So that's where that hits for me. Um, I love putting these little pops of the red in here. So you can see already that's smoothed that out a bit. I mean, we still have like this shadow is pretty harsh. I'm being really gentle with my tool here. This is my lighter one. Okay. So I feel like I really need to get in there and um, bring up some of the other stuff because she's just looking like she's in. Normally, I, I, I should have followed my gut on that. Normally, I would bring everything up along with it, but I just really wanted to show you guys a big chunk of the face today. So you guys are going to have to come back on uh, Thursday because this is going to be a ton of fun. And I can always put things back if I felt like I pushed it like I feel like I pushed that line a little bit too much from the and pencils will help with this too and I'm not really out of for for total perfection here so that's fine I just don't want her to have a white mustache when we leave today I mean white mustaches are not <laughs> okay so I'm gonna leave that right now Can't help it. I gotta bring up the lip. Okay. So she definitely has a lot of stuff to bring up. So I'm gonna go and bring block in some of this other, um, some of these other elements. I might have bitten off more than I can chew to be able to finish all of this in the two days, but we will see. Because I decided I was gonna abstract out whatever I didn't finish. So for the red, I'm gonna go a little bit darker the red shade and then um, Liz thank you so much I'm glad this speaks to you I appreciate that Dreamweaver I'll be here for sure it's all I could think about last night was today's live I'm very happy it's portrait based well I am stoked that you're enjoying it um, 
I think you guys will be really surprised because a lot of the things that you don't get to see an artist when they're working, even on Instagram, on you know showing these developments, you don't get to see the uncomfortable stage a lot. I mean, you guys are probably like, well, this isn't uncomfortable. Well, for me, it's still in what you guys might call the ugly stage, but I'm just trying to reframe that and really call it the uncomfortable stage. So um, I'm just gonna go in here and get some of these elements brought up and you're gonna see how much it changes the face. That's another thing I've learned. If I just sat here and worked on her face, even though she looks a little bit like um, modeled right now and not as, like if I stand back here, I, I like it, but I feel like there's a lot of things I wanna do. But if I just sat there and hyper-focused on her face, then um, it just doesn't, the other part of the painting just um, won't be harmonized. So I really think it's important to work it all, to bring it all up kind of together. So this is a great spot to do that. And plus all of these other elements are so much fun too. So. I love the idea that she's part of the forest. I have some earlier pieces that I was sitting there thinking about the other night as I was like, some of my first women um, had the same vibe. I made them into kind of animal women. They had little, you know, noses of animal. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this is a similar, we, we get patterns in what we, create and sometimes you don't even know you're creating a pattern and then you will um, look back after years of work and you'll see the pattern it's just you're growing and it's pretty cool when you've shown up to see that for yourself when I did the auctions a lot I, I did a quirk show once and oh my god I love the quirk show so much and it really brought out a lot of my uh, quirkiness and my pieces. And um, I, I realized I was hiding a lot of that from people because I didn't think I would be, you know, that my work wasn't going to be good enough and it wasn't going to be liked if it was quirky. And, and I would just say the last couple of years, I've just started to say, I don't care <laughs> and just doing what I love. And if I have a chick with a, a girl with a mushroom coming out of her eye, then that's my prerogative. I'm the artist, right? So I'm really trying to just do what gets me excited. And when I drew this, I was like, oh my gosh, I love that so much. I don't know how it's gonna develop and turn out, but um, it, I will usually, that's how I follow my joy because when um, people say, well, how do I find my style? It's those little moments, if that gets you excited and you are, you know, or those scribbles got you excited and you were like, that is awesome. I loved how that felt. Or when you look back on your work and say maybe the whole piece didn't turn out, really write down what you did like. What did you like when you created the piece? Especially when you're exploring and learning techniques, there's, um, that's how I would say to find your style is to really be a little bit self-aware with what is bringing you joy and lean into that more. If you're finding that you like to abstract things, then really focus more on that. Um, I think that's the, what gives me the answers and that's why I consider myself an intuitive painter because I'm constantly tapping into those moments and I feel like it's the painting knows what it wants before I even do. So that's my little thing about following your joy. I think that's really key in finding your style and just building your skills up. All right. So I think I want, when I was thinking of the rainbow hair, is I want this red streak to go through here. I 
I have some of the older pieces that I've done with rainbows and their hairs. One of my favorites is in my studio, but um, I think this will be fun. And this red will, seeing how it goes down here, Three fifteen? Are you guys kidding me? You know what? I think I might on these ones go a few minutes longer, like fifteen minutes, because I don't think I'm going to be able to make it next week. So I might just add fifteen minutes onto this. All right, Ellen, you have a great dinner. Okay. Awesome, I'm glad you'll come back and tell me what you think. Comment on the replay. I look forward to hearing what you think. Dreamweaver, I'm actually a patron of another artist. I'm quite used to the uncomfortable stage and find it fascinating how it comes together. Yeah, the, the, how it comes together, learning how to trust that is huge. And I think every painting, even if it's a success or I don't think they're ever really failures because I think you come away with learning more about what you want and what you don't want. I think the contrast is really good. Now I might tone down these colors down here, but for right now I'm just blocking it in. Because if I, I can always, the cool thing about pan pastel is you can push and pull. And so And I want to make, probably put highlights and push back a little bit on some of these so it looks like it's coming forward and, and away. So now I'm going to choose where I want that red to come in up above. And I, right here, I know we've already got a lot of red. So if anything, I might just put it back behind here so it adds a little bit of it even looks like it's a mushroom on her head. I don't know if I'll like that later, you know? But see, the thing is, it's pastel. We get to make changes. So here I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might want this red right here. Now, Laura, I know it's left overnight for you. That cracked me up that you have Tuesdays and Thursdays as left overnight. Um, so you can watch this. My in-laws were here this weekend and um, they were so sweet. They uh, watched one of my lives you know, replays with me. They really wanted to know what I was doing. And then I took them into the studio to show them the setup and everything. And it was really fun sharing that with them. They are really sweet and very curious. So that was a lot of fun. Okay. So I'm just doing that blocking in stage again, kind of getting that structure to figure out how I want things to flow. Your husband watches the video with you and he cooks the dinner now and he has to watch while he eats. So <laughs> that's funny. That's awesome, Peg. That's right. Or fend for yourselves night. Oh, I love that. Dreamweaver, I'm glad you're, you're liking this. Yeah, I, I'm really grateful for um, my in-laws. They really support my artwork and they don't always understand it. But, um, you know, I lost both of my parents at a younger age. Um, my dad passed away when he was 61 and my mom when she was 60, God, I think she was 67. Uh, and so um, she, she just passed away three years ago. And so it's really, I really value my, my in-laws and, and our relationship that we have. And okay, so I got the reds in, so I feel like, okay, that's, really structured. And you can see how I worked through the piece and got those in. And now I'm trying to think, well, what color do I want 
to put the next in and I'm thinking of going in this violet um, I'll probably well let's let's do the orange orangey color here I think I'm gonna want if I go orange here I want down here to be the violet so if that's the case um, the red and the orange I want it to go red and violet and blue so I think I'm gonna put the orange here and you never know on Thursday I might I might make a change I don't know how I'm gonna feel once I um, get this done and this isn't gonna be all perfect because they're flowing in all different ways and I'm kinda of just going over and getting that color down quickly Cheryl thank you I'm glad you're loving the red see it's really important to get some of these other colors in I got you know 10 minutes on regular live time I think I'm gonna go the 15 minutes over just so I can get the blocking end stage done because if I go in the next week without the blocking end stage I really feel like um, it's gonna be hard to finish and I don't even have the hair in I might split this with magenta, but. So I'm gonna be rainbowing this out. Like these are gonna blend in. They're not gonna be so, so structured, but I gotta start somewhere. And that that's what I'm trying to, to show people is that I'm building up structure to allow me to have freedom. If I just start and show up and start throwing things together, the percentage of me being successful goes down quite a bit. <laughs> um, so for me, I like to, you know, I've always fought against my structure. I have a graphic design background. I love to use collage elements. I um, did digital scrapbooking, so I made clusters of elements, rubber stamping. And I like taking that and um, integrating it into what I'm doing now. I don't know if I want that yellow there. I'm going to take that out because, well, I'll leave that one spot and just see what happens. And so that's why I use the, you know, the tracing paper because I can layer, layer, layer and try different ideas on top of each other. I'm going to go with this orange right here. I don't think I want that diarolide to be all that. I might rotate in between with these colors. That's going to blend into the skin if I don't do a different. I'm, I think I'm going to go magenta. And I will work on figuring out that transition. Oh, sorry to hear that, and it's quite special that your in-laws see you as their own. Yes, they are the sweetest in-laws. I was really lucky in that department. Um, you're not going to complain about the 15 minutes. I'm glad you're not, Dreamweaver. Thank you. Um, I've been really trying to keep these at two hours, but figurative is a lot more in-depth. And sometimes when you make these choices, like you stagger something and it's not so perfect, sometimes that turns out to be like the coolest thing. So you have to trust those moments. So 
So I got the orange going that way. I'll put a little bit of this blue in here. And that's going to tie in the other blue. You know what? I'm thinking. I'm thinking which way I want to go on the rainbow, but let's see what this looks like on the outside. if I love that teal. That green's going to look really good against the flower. Paula Lewis, I just have to practice with that red. It looks great on the black paper. Yeah, I, I have to say it's some of my favorite pop. That's why I think I love mushrooms so much is because I... Uh, get to use the red <laughs> and it's really pretty when you mix it in and bring out the oranges which I'm going to be doing on the next layers here. So I don't think this green would look as out of place if I had some of these foliages done. See so we have to remember that I didn't bring them all up at the same time and when I don't do that um, this is the lesson for me for the live is that it's really a little bit more challenging for me to harmonize when I don't have the colors all throughout the piece. Like I don't even have this fern in yet. So the green wouldn't look so odd if I had these already put in. So that's something to really think about when, for me and my style, um, building up a piece I want to get some of these colors in sooner. And then it's going to start looking like it's going to all work together. Denine, she has to run, but we'll rewatch tomorrow. She's coming along beautifully. Thank you, Denine. Thank you so much. Ah, Lori, you, you would rock rainbow hair. I think you used to put teal in your hair, if I recall. I'm um, glad you like the hair. I, I'm trying to think of what color I want to hear, so I'm, I'm playing around with that. I think I might have to bump this to a different spot and put the... Um, I'm trying to think because maybe if I go blue but the red and blue right next to each other is quite a bit so I feel like it needs to go violet blue and then teal but um, I'm just going to do this and we'll come back to it if it's a mistake then I don't think it is I think that looks fun I love this iron oxide. It's so pretty, you guys. Yeah, I think that's what it needed. And this is going to bring in the mushrooms too. And it might bring a lot of the red up, but I don't think this piece can have enough red because I'm going to keep the background pretty dark. So having this, this orangey red on this edge here really makes that edge pop. I like that. So I'm going to bring in some of that green 
right up here because um, that's going to look great against the red. Oh, really like this bright yellow green is my one of my favorites. And that's going to give that a, a, a more foliage vibe. And then I can take this um, uh, phalo green and I can put that behind it and that's going to look really pretty. So you can see how just getting, figuring out where you want all this to roll can be the challenge, but it's the blocking in stage and it really is a foundation. You're, you're, you're creating some foundation to work off of. Okay, so I'm going to go throughout, put in some of these. So if you didn't hear, I'm going to go over a few minutes so I can get all this stuff blocked in. I think I'm going to put a little bit of that magenta down here. I know I have orange right there. I think I'm going to... I tell you, man, doing these lives really helps me keep loose. Uh, a time limit can help. Um, that's something... I did this thing where I did um, 30 faces. Um, and uh, it was with Meg McC Mihelos McCoy. I, always have a hard time pronouncing her last name but um, she did this wonderful 30 faces and I just did them in black pan pastel and oh my gosh you did a timer and you gave yourself 15 minutes what a fabulous exercise that was um, I learned a lot and boy you sure work through some like getting if you like quirky and you want to you know free up your work you know just taking the black pan pastel and the extra large uh, like Canson mixed media paper, um, you can really push through a lot of work and really understand your values with just using the black. Okay, so I'm going to put this down here. I can always be toning that down maybe a little bit later, but I want to see how it looks now. Love the flow of the hair. Okay, so we'll get some more of this foliage in. I'm trying to see what she's looking like on the screen. Pull that out a little bit. I think she's blown up on the screen a little bit and so it's going to make the actual video look okay I'm just making sure my focus and everything's working good because I have it on manual focus because um, I had it on auto and it, it focused on everything <laughs> So I'm rotating through some different greens here, some um, permanent green, some phalo green, bright yellow greens. I love mixing up greens. I think it creates a great foundation to build up and rainbow things out. I have quite a bit of that color in. I need to bring this one in a little bit more. I think I'm... I saw a lot of those faces that you did, Dawn. You did, they were awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. Oh, Lori, you're back on on Oh Shiny. Oh, I can do both accounts. How weird. <laughs> um, let me see. I must uh, dream. Dawn has a Facebook group where people share their work. Yeah, I can definitely put the link in um, the description. It's also on my website at dawnvanderstoop.com. I have it on there. Um, 
it's just the the artwork of Don Vanderstoop. That's the Facebook group. No, that's my Facebook page, and then it's called um, uh, Creative Collective. Um, but I can put that in in here after we're done. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm just gonna say Valley Mermaid. I know it's Veronica. I think. Um, Saw a lot of those faces. I, I don't see it. Yeah, the the it didn't show up. Yeah, she's got it. I wonder. I can get the permissions to change. I wonder if it's because it's newer. I'm not sure why it's not allowing links. I really want this to be like a magenta one because I loved how that worked into the owl. Valerie. Yeah, I did remember though. So for those of you who don't remember Lori Michaels, her and I have been friends for over 25 years. And uh, she's an artist. And um, so I'm just so happy she's here today. Uh, we live about an hour and I don't know, almost, well, hour and 45 minutes away from each other, but we, we try to see each other quite often. And we create and She's the one that got me started and hooked on pan pastels. So the other thing about doing the different colors for these little greeneries in the background is it just creates some separation so they're not all one color too. So I might have some time here to be able to put in the mushrooms. I think I had an earlobe here and I got rid of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. The thing with pastel is you can put it in. I'll have to play around with that. Sometimes I try to bury the earlobes. I'll um, play with that one. Okay, let's see if I can get this flower done. Okay, so that's in pretty good. I'm going to use this raw umber to kind of create a little bit of neutrality, get a little bit of a neutral in there. And I'm going to use this for um, the mushroom bases. I will still pop some color in there. I'm just going to, um, it's always nice to have something that's a little bit neutral against all the color. Oh my gosh, 15 minutes just is flying by.
Thank you, Lori, for helping out. I will figure out about the links. I did not know you couldn't do links in here. I think last week I asked people to put their Instagram links. Now I know why. <laughs> deciding to put a little bit of that burnt sienna in here too because um, that's going to bring the face and harmonize the face and I really don't need these mushrooms to be super detailed if anyone um, this one maybe I'm going to be bringing these out again because their bases are mostly white but like I said, I'm blocking in and I want that to be colorful. So if I just put the white in now, it, it would look pretty flat. This is the raw umber and the burnt sienna. I'm really throwing around the idea of um, making this a white daisy. I'm just scared it's going to take away from everything. But if it doesn't turn out, I can just pull up these colors too. So I want to go peachy with it. So I'm going to go into the magenta and the diarolide. Now I can put down one layer of, of the magenta and then bring the diarolite over it. So I might just end up doing that. And I can always add more tint to this to um, white it out if I want it to be whiter. But I love dahlias and I'm wanting, it kind of gave me a dahlia vibe. So. Okay. I don't know if any of you guys plant dahlias, but I love dahlias. So like I said, this is just blocking that in and then I can take that diarolide and go over it. Okay, so we have a ways to go folks, but I think this um, taking this time to uh, get it all blocked in will make next week really exciting. Um, and I'll have time to work on everything next week and be able to bring it all up. So. And now I get some time to reflect on it and figure out what I want to maybe adjust to. Oh, I got a couple more petals here. I might blend those petals into her face. I kind of like that idea. Oh, I think that's, well, that's a little bit of the fern. That might be fun to have them. I might even do that right now. I can't help myself. Oh, my son's home. <laughs> So that's Sunny. You guys get to experience Sunny. <laughs> Sunny, come here, buddy. I'm just going to mute my mic for a second and then I'll wrap up. I'll be right there. Okay. So um, I think we're at a really good spot to stop for today. And um, I have a little Sunny with me. He's all fired up. He's kind of had a tummy ache, but um, I um, will come back next week and we are going to have pencils. We're going to abstract things out. This is just the structure and the color. So I'm really excited about where it's at. And um, I uh, 
think it's going to be so much fun to see it develop. So come back here next week. Definitely hit like if you're enjoying the video. I really appreciate all of your comments. And I'm just so glad you're here today. We had a record turnout. That's always awesome. And I will see you here next Thursday. And oh no, this Thursday at um, 1.30 um, p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So thank you so much, everyone. And I'll read your comments here before I go. I got Mr. Sonny with me, so he's not gonna go bark at my son. No, be nice. He growls at everybody. Doesn't matter if it's my husband, me, or my son. So um, yes, thank you guys so much. I am um, so glad you guys came here today. What a turnout. And um, I look forward to Thursday. All right, you guys, bye-bye.